Sup, 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 bros. It's Terry. I'm a bull. And this week I'll be talking about something that everyone loves. This topic, this, this concept is beloved by both leftists and rightists and everyone in between, except maybe the centrists, because centrists are pretty chill. But you might say that with everyone else, it's totally all the rage. And that would be offense by proxy. What is offense by proxy, you might ask, Rose? Well, offense by proxy is getting offended on someone else's behalf, or possibly an entire people's behalf. It is when someone says something about someone else, and you find that absolutely horrible, so you get all up for art rage and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I got thinking about this uh, after a... uh, a DM conversation I had with a bro who has opposite political opinions on than me, and it kind of got heated. And I hope that we can still, um, I, I genuinely hope that we can still talk. It did kind of get a little bit heated in that. But the point in the conversation, we talked about a lot of things that night, but the, the final thing before both of us had to go was Donald Trump's calling Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas. And we're going to set aside the f- fact that she, uh, uh, whether or not she actually is partially Native American, it's not relevant to this conversation. Um, but he, he contended that it was offensive, one, because it was a racial slur, two, that it was because it hit her with two to three hundred years of history of oppression all at once, and three, it demeaned a heroic historical figure of the Native American people. And I'm not going to address those things here because ultimately I think they are irrelevant because what I said then was that Elizabeth Warren is a grown woman and can react how she wants to it and that he had no right to get angry on her behalf because he doesn't actually know her. She doesn't know him. They're not friends. They do not have any sort from a very distant common relative probably humans are like that i mean cattle are too but anyway but yeah to me getting offended on behalf of someone else is probably the biggest waste of energy you can do because i mean elizabeth warren doesn't know this bro and doesn't even if she was aware of his existence there's a good chance that she still wouldn't actually care about him. And that's not a, uh, that is not a statement on an opinion on him as an individual. I think he's a really cool bro who does really cool things. Um, he's, he's written books and has a podcast that I like that I'll be talking about eventually. But you see, there's this, it's literally impossible to care about more than a certain amount of individuals in your life actively. I mean, you can say that you care about people over in Asia, but really all you do is care about the few people you know in Asia and maybe their families and maybe a possible third degree. But everyone is has a limit of how many bros they can actually care about at any given time. So it's useless to get offended on behalf of someone who does not even actually care that you're getting offended on behalf of them. I mean, I could see, I, I can see someone's family members and friends getting righteously, I mean, rightfully offended on behalf of their friend. But that's it. Because if my sister got insulted, I would, and hurt or insulted, I'd probably leap in her defense. But if one of my bros got, you know, I would probably be right up there defending him and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not one to take offense that much. I mean, I do. I'm not going to say I don't totally... I never take offense at anything. I'm I'm not I haven't achieved that level of chill yet. Working on it. But um yeah, I am if unless you are a friend or close to medium close relative of that person, you should not be taking offense on I don't I don't believe that you should take offense on that because they probably don't care that you are taking offense. And if they are offended, that's their issue. And if they say, tell their followers and whatever to get offended, then fine, you, you've got a free pass. But, I mean, was 
Elizabeth Warren even offended by this? I, I didn't look it up. But the other thing is, what if the what if people take offense to something that the bro did not actually get offended by? I've actually, when I did some uh, reading on this subject before I did it, and I found um, two articles. One was on the Irish Times, and the other one was on the Center for Inquiry. The Irish Times article was by Brian Boyd. And he lists uh, a few different examples of of media outright outrage over over something uh, when the uh, person involved was not offended and sometimes even actually flattered by it. Um, this is the first part of the article, The nar Narcissism of Taking Offense by Proxy. Madonna sexually harassed a young female fan last week and the world was outraged. At a concert in Brisbane, the singer got 17-year-old Josephine Georgiou up on Giorgio? I don't know. Up on stage and in front of the audience and millions watching online pulled down Giorgio's top to reveal her left breast. Madonna crossed the line. She went too far this time. That fan should be outraged and sue for sexual harassment, etc. Was the outrage uh, in fla flagrante delicto? I don't know what I don't know what that means, bros. Uh, um, but when Georgiou was asked about her humiliation in front of the watching world by Madonna, she calmly replied, "Only I get to decide if I'm humiliated or not." Regardless, the professionally offended continued to take offense on Georgiou's behalf, and up to and including getting offended that Georgiou herself was not offended. And then another, the other example they brought up was um, a comedian walked into a bar. No, really. And saw a woman on the dance floor and, having never met her before, approached her and said, Whatever it is you're looking for, you don't need it. The woman was the actress Olivia Wilde. According to one journalist taking offense on behalf of Wilde, the comedian's Jason Sudeikis remark was rude, condescending, and creepy. But, very inconveniently, Wilde loved hearing the uninvited comment from a complete stranger. The couple now have a child together and are engaged to be married. As the Boers points out, Wilde has agency and made her own adult decisions about the nature of Sudex's pickup line and is, uh, is the sole and violent authority of her own life. As for those who take offense on behalf of others, he writes, the economy of offense is revealed to be just another expression of our ego. We need to remember that we are not the cosmos, that the world is full of other people making their own adult decisions. And I agree with both of those, both the comments on those situations. And to continue on that thought, the Center for Inquiry article says here, it could be argued that being offended on someone else's behalf, and contrary to his or her wishes without being asked to do so, is itself offensive as it removes that person's agency and denies them the right to define their own experiences, especially if the person taking offense by proxy in a position of power by virtue of race, class, education, etc. It may subtly reinforce false stereotypes of powerlessness, suggesting, for example, that a minority needs to needs intervention afforded by privilege and can't stand up for themselves. Offense by proxy attempts to impose an outsider's often collective social justice interpretation on an, an individual's experience to accept a narrative they may not agree with. Women in particular who are deemed as not sufficiently offended by their own experiences may in some cases even be accused of being brainwashed or having internalized sexist stereotypes. And the situation may also arise when minority groups are subjected to the potentially offensive names, such as the professional football team, the Washington Redskins. This is complicated by the fact that, according to the recent Washington Post poll, 90% of Native Americans surveyed said they did not find the term offensive. If a non-Native American person takes offense at the name on behalf of the small minority of Native Americans who are offended, the question arises why that person is in a better position or more qualified to judge what is or should be offensive than the majority of Native Americans. Some might be far more insulted that a white person would take offense on their behalf than by the name themselves. I highly recommend reading the entirety of the Center for Inquiry article, bros. It is very well written. It's long, but it has three different points of view on the subject, and I thought it was a really good, uh, a really good fascinating read. So I will put the link to that as well as the Irish Times article in the description. So check those out when you got it, get a chance. But yeah, that basically is what I think about Vince by Proxy. And I totally agree with the title of the Irish Times article. Just the fact that it is 
huge, it is just narcissism. It is pure arrogance to take offense on behalf of someone else, especially if they don't take offense to whatever it was themselves. Because it is you assuming that you know best for the other person, and that you know the other person, and that they want you to be outraged over it. It's it's all those things wrapped up into one, and it's just a huge, huge, huge waste of energy. You're 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 giving up space in your mind to someone who might not even care about you, and that's just kind of dumb. But yeah, I'm I'm to I fully admit that I am not blameless in this regard, and am I am actually going to make a more conscious effort to not give into that, and I think it would be a very good exercise for everyone that when they start feeling, if you start feeling offended on behalf of someone else who's not related to you and you're not friends with, or even if you are, look to see if they are actually offended themselves first before you actually go out and vent your outrage. Because if they're not, then chill. They don't care. Neither should you. But if they are, so what? What will think about... What exactly would your getting offended and voicing offense on it do for them that they're not already doing for themselves? How is it going to help them? Think about it. If you're getting offended and they are actually genuinely offended too, what are you going to say about it that this other person is not already saying for themselves? What can you add to the conversation? I think that in this specific thing, one, make sure the person is offended before you voice outrage, and two, Think exactly what your input would actually contribute to the conversation. That the bro who is a, the offended bro isn't already saying. Because you're probably not going to change someone's mind about someone if you get offended on behalf of them. If, you, if you're speaking on behalf of someone who doesn't even know you. But, what do you think, bros? Um, do you think that there are more... Appropriate times, aside from just friends and family, where you should get offended on behalf of them? Do you think you should just go ahead and get offended on behalf of everyone all the time? Let me know in the comments below, or if you'd like to talk to me elsewhere, I am, I'm Terry Bull on Twitter, Minds and Gab, and I'm also on VidMe. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're probably already watching this on VidMe, but let me know what you think, and wherever you are, follow me on the Twitter, uh, follow me on Twitter and Minds and Gab. And I uh, hope to talk to you bros soon. And uh, let me know what you think. And uh, have a great week. Peace. Love. Tauros.